Today on The Daily Dose, Sherman's March to the Sea. In an early example of psychological warfare, after Union General William Tecumseh Sherman's army captured the Confederate industrial hub of Atlanta on September 2, 1864, the story general set out to break the will and morale of Southern civilians, intending to make life so unpleasant for Georgians that they would demand an end to the war. To that end, Sherman sent Major General George Thomas and some 60,000 Union soldiers to face off with the Confederates at Nashville, while Sherman led his 62,000 remaining men through Georgia to Savannah. Smashing things to the sea, he wrote in his diary. Sherman's forces split into two columns some 30 miles apart, skirmishing with a 3,500-man Confederate cavalry division on November 22nd, which saw 650 Confederate soldiers killed or wounded, compared to Union casualties of 62, inspiring all Confederate forces in the area to sidestep both Union lines in the future, fleeing from Sherman's men employing a scorched earth tactic of burning barns that held Confederate provisions. Sherman's men, in turn, wreaked havoc on farms and plantations confiscating food stocks and supplies to support their march towards Savannah. It isn't so sweet to secede, one Yankee soldier wrote home, while South Carolinian Mary Boykin Chestnut wrote in her diary, since Atlanta, I have felt as if we are going to be wiped off the earth. Sherman's terror squads reached Savannah on December 21, 1864, nearly a month after departing Atlanta finding the coastal city undefended after the departure of some 10,000 Confederate troops who fled the city in advance of Sherman's arrival. Sherman's total war policy proved to be brutal and destructive throughout his campaign, yet his strategy proved decisive in breaking Southern morale and most likely hasten the end of the American Civil War. One of Sherman's subordinates in the campaign wrote that their goal was to produce among the people of Georgia a thorough conviction of the personal misery which attends war and the utter helplessness and inability of their rulers to protect them. By early 1865, Sherman's forces had pillaged and burned their way across South Carolina to Charleston until his march to the sea ended in April when Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered to Union Commanding General Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse, Virginia, ending a four-year bloody conflict that took the lives of 620,000 American fighting men. And there you have it, Sherman's March to the Sea, today in The Daily Dose. Get your nerd on with The Daily Dose. And if you enjoyed today's episode, share the link with a friend or colleague so that they too can learn something new every day.